Institute of Engineering Science and Technology, Shibpur. His research interest includes mechatronics, robotics, smart material, CAD, CAM, industrial automation, assistive devices, innovative product development, and BCI, HMI, and rural technology. Dr. Baumik is the principal investigator of sponsored projects of Indo-US Fabrionics National Initiative on Design Innovation. He has guided eight PhD thesis and presently guiding three PhD works. He has published more than 80 research papers in SCI journals and conferences. Two innovative products have been filled for patent. He is a fellow member of Institution of Engineers, member of Association of Machines and Mechanism, Robotic Society of India, and expert member of Rehabilitation Council of India. He was the Zonal Vice President of an Association of Machines and Mechanism, Editorial Board Member and Member of Robotic Society of India. Dr. Barmik was Dean, Research and Cons Consultancy, and, present and presently President, Institution Innovation Council, IIEST Sipur. We welcome you, sir. Thank you, Yoshi, for the wonderful citation. Now, before moving on to the session, a few instructions to be followed by the participants present here today. I request all the students to stay muted throughout the session. Kindly type your queries in the chat box, which will be answered by the speaker at the end of the session. The feedback link will be posted in the chat box at the end of the session. Now, I request Dr. Subhashish Tomik, sir, to take over the session. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Managing Director, Honorable Director, Honorable Principal, Distinguished Faculty Members, and my dear students. Today, We are going to learn a new subject, a new field, which is known as augmented reality and virtual reality. We are all passing through a very critical situations, pandemic conditions. Our academics is mostly it is now confined in home. It is very difficult to explain or to take the laboratory classes. Somehow we are managing the theoretical class, but conducting the laboratory sessions is really, really difficult. So at this moment, there is a hope, there is a light that how we can impart education how we can impart engineering educations to our students, which is mostly depending upon practical knowledge or practical informations. There is no engineering course which does not have any practical sessions. And for the last two years, the students are practically speaking not exposed to any so-called practical problems, practical demonstrations. Maybe we are doing some sort of video for the experimental part and we are showing it to the students. But through that, it is very, very difficult for the students to understand what is happening at the background. So, as I mentioned that there is a hope, there is a light, a new technology has evolved. So it is our responsibility as a faculty members to share the informations with the students. We will discuss today a technology which is under development stage but which has a huge potential. The academics people can use it the industry people, they are also using it. 
even the engineers the doctors the medical professionals the teachers each and every field of people they are trying to use this technology right now this is also another technology which requires some knowledge of interdisciplinary fields this technology does not belongs to electronics engineering it does not belongs to computer science it does not belongs to mechanical engineering so if we see the nature of this kind of technology which is coming up is really a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary in nature so to understand this technology we require a knowledge of computer science we require very much we require the knowledge of electronics hardware and the softwares we require the knowledge of mechanical systems without this knowledge of interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary knowledge it is really it is difficult to understand the technology with this little bit of introductions now we go into the formally into the presentation part give me a time please this is visible yes sir it's visible yeah yeah so the title of the talk is the era of virtual reality and augmented reality technological revolutions underway i'm just showing a picture of my institute our institute iist shipur is located uh, in howrah which is very near to calcutta city of kajoy and the upper portion is the views of the institute views and at the bottom i am just sharing some static pictures of here of what air and the wear looks like here you see that a boy is sitting very near to a television set the question is why maybe some drama is going on on the television set on the monitor and the boy is looking at this at the screen with high level of attention why if the child is sitting away from the television set he can also see the movie he can also see the see the whatever is happening there he can also watch a cricket match also but why the boy is trying to come very near to the television set because of the facts that he wants to be an immersive he wants to feel immersive if he sits very near to the television set that means he does not wants to keep any distance between the television set and himself he thinks that if the distance becomes zero between the television set and his position then he can have a better observations better look into what is happening at the background also the mind the mind the boy is feeling that as if he is present in the environment what is happening in the television set so if it is a cricket match is happening there in the television set the boy thinks that as if he is present in the playground 
he is present he himself is present in the field so that kind of feeling will be developed when the distance between the child and the television set becomes narrow so the requirement was there from the scientific point of view from the technological point of view that how to bring the television set bear very near to the eyepiece very near to our eyes and on the left hand side you can see uh, it is written there now so a person is wearing a head mounted display units and you can see that there is no gap basically there is no gap through which the light can pass and everything on the side of his eye is everything is covered so it's it indicates that he will not be able to see anything else but only he can have a views on the screen so more and more he can pay more and more concentration on what he is looking and this is known as immersive see as if he is immersed into the environment into the situation so if we can create this kind of environment then our feeling will be as if we are present then as if we are present in what is happening so even if you think that you are finding you are seeing a battlefield and you can feel at that time you can feel that as if you are also present in the battlefield you yourself is present in the battlefield and this particular technology is considered as one of the disruptive technology which has been developed for the last 20 years so it is an extremely interactive in nature this technology is interactive in nature this is filled fun filled and refreshing in kind it improves the collaborative learning process it will create a better connections with the humans seeing is not believing in virtual reality as the name suggests it is virtual it is not a real it is a virtual reality it's not a reality so whatever we are finding or whatever we are saying through this head mounted type of display unit basically this is a virtual one this is not a real but that's the starting point of the virtual reality so the virtual reality begins with what we are seeing so led by the commercial sectors this air and the vr technology are witnessing a substantial rise past few years have been the eventful years for the augmented reality and the virtual reality field from the entertainment uses to the business applications this immersive technology have made their way into the every aspects of our life the immersive technology these have made their way into their all aspects of our life this outbreak of this covid situations covid 19 situation this has significantly promoted this technology adoptions as business turn to work from home our remote work model i will come later on that how this particular technology is helping the people to work from home not to join in an industry now we we you know that during this covid situations also industry people they are recruiting uh, engineers graduates engineers also do you think that they are making the payment just by pay by, they are making the payment without uh, without getting any output from the engineers during this lockdown period during this pandemic situations it's not known it's not like that so the industry people they are using this air and the vr technology for imparting training the training that generally they used to provide on the field itself now they are taking the help of this ar and the vr technology to provide the necessary training to the graduate engineers before they join into the industry and that's why they are paid for so this use of this ar and the vr it allows the company as well as the individuals to work to talk and socialize with others as these technologies can create the larger simulation environment 
among all these innovations that surrounds this air and the VR technology, the immersive technology undoubtedly enables an incredible source of transformations in all the sectors. Augmented reality and the virtual reality will continue to have an optimum impact on the industry sectors. The question is, what is virtual reality? So this is a virtual reality is basically a psychophysics based technology. So psychophysics means it has an effect on psychological effect, psychological effect on the mind. So whenever we are viewing, viewing something through these head mounted type of display units, it has psychological effects on our brain, on our un mind and also on our understanding. So this virtual reality, it is a psychologic based physics, psychophysics based technology that uses the software to generate the realistic image sound and other sensations that replicate the real world environments. This is virtual, completely it is a virtual. So nothing real in it. So whatever we were seeing, everything is in the virtual form. And the virtual form, you can create a virtual reality environment with the help of CAD modeling and the simulations. So whenever we are talking about this virtual reality, practically speaking at the background, there are CAD modeling softwares, they are working at the backgrounds. So everything is coming on the screen, on the computer screen in the simulated form. So this virtual reality, it refers to a high end of user interface that involves the real time simulations and interactions through the multiple sensorial channels. So the thing is that whatever is coming on the computer screen or whatever is coming on the head mounted type of display units that we are finding that you can you can interact with so say for examples i just rotate my head in the right hand directions then immediately what will happen whatever was happening or what was was coming on the screen immediately that will be shifted towards the right directions so previously the image part or the graphics part which was not visible, the right hand portion was not visible to you. Now the right hand portions will be visible to you because you have shifted your visions from the front towards the right hand side directions. So whatever is there in the right hand side directions, this will be visible to you. So here the interaction is very natural kind of interactions. I will just move my heads maybe in the forward directions, maybe in the backward directions, maybe in the right directions, maybe in the left directions. And accordingly, whatever is coming on the computer screen, that will be shifted, that will be changed, which is not possible in case of normal simulation process. So a user can interact and manipulate with the virtual objects of the virtual world with the help of specialized devices like display screens and the other devices. So there are certain input devices, those who are associated with the computer science and um, electronics backgrounds. So they have heard the name of input output devices. So there are certain types of input devices are there through which we can communicate with computer systems or we are we can able to communicate whatever is happening and the at the backgrounds in the simulation mode so that can we can control it with the help of some devices let us say for examples we take a very simple examples of a joysticks which is used for the video games controlling of the video games purposes it has other applications but mostly the children's they use this type of joysticks type of devices okay for controlling the video games so, joy, so the joysticks is one of the input devices which can be connected with the virtual reality environment and with the operations of the joysticks i can control control the total screen what is happening at the background i can control it and and whatever i will find on the head mounted type of display units that will basically uh, basically we can say this is this is the outcome of the input that has been given through the joysticks. So here the joysticks is using as an input devices. 
So this is the replications of reality, real or created, which runs on the computer screens. You can see at the bottom, at the bottom level, okay, so there is a projections of a car projections. And this car projections is on a screen. And this car projections is just, it is a simulation, that's it is a projections only, simple projections only. It's a kind of LCD, uh, LCD uh, projection systems are there through which we are projecting on the screens. I think I, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So there was a call. So I thought that maybe you people are calling. Okay. Anything. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so this, this is a, uh, this particular screen. Okay. It's showing the projections on a, on a uh, monitors. Okay. The second one that we are finding over here. So this one is. This one is a CAD model and this CAD model is running on a computer screen. But here we can find that the three people are standing in front of a some in front of the computer monitors and everybody is wearing a gloves. Just a minute, please. Hello. Uh, hello. Just a minute. So uh, uh, the persons, three persons, they are standing in front of a computer screen and they are, uh, there is, they are wearing a data glove. Uh, they are wearing uh, some head mounted type of display units. Now, whatever they are seeing on their uh, head mounted type of display units, that looks like whatever is uh, displayed on the computer graphic screen. Okay, but, uh, but it uh, becomes more and more realistic and uh, what happens, they can see each and every part, each and every component of whatever is shown on the computer graphics screen. Okay. So the virtual reality is an artificial environment that is built with the software, which temporarily makes the user suspend their belief and make them uh, accept that it is a real environment. Virtual reality is primarily experienced through the two of the five sensors on the computer versions. Picture is worth of thousands of words, but virtual reality is worth of a million. So generally we say that, that uh, instead of saying something, if it is, uh, if, if, if the picture of the things is there, so it will be have, it will have a create more impact on the mind of the understandings of the persons. But here we can say that the virtual reality is worth a million. That means it is worth a million compared to the pictures part. So the virtual reality is, it helps the user to experience anything, anywhere, at any time. It is the most immersive type of reality technology that can convince the human brain that it is something it is really not. So at the backgrounds, definitely it must play in your mind that whatever you are finding or whatever you are seeing, that is not a real, but whenever you are observing, uh, observing with the help of this virtual reality, then everybody seems to be like a real. So head mounted display units, these are used with the headphones and the hand hand controllers units to produce a completely immersive experiences. So the head mounted display units, one has to wear a head mounted display units. And also at the same time, there must be some devices which will act as a controller unit, say a handheld type of controller units, through which you can give the necessary instructions to your computer systems. So here you can see the person is uh, wearing the head mounted type of display units and uh, he is looking into a graphics uh, environment, graphics screen but the graphic strings looks like a real one. History part is that this particular technology is not a new one. Okay, this is very old technology and it has started from the 1950s. There was some sort of flight simulators which was built by the US Air Force to train its student pilot. And for that purposes, at that time, they have started using this virtuality concept. In 1965, a research programs 
of computer graphics called the ultimate display it was laid in the year of 1965 1988 some commercial vr systems has been developed in 1991 the first commercial entertainment vr systems which is called as virtuality it was released and uh, now in 2021 there are full fledged hardware and the software devices or the software systems are there which are used for this air and the weird part. So in one hand we have a real environment on the left hand side, on the, on the other hand, uh, on, the, on the right hand side we have a virtual environment. So what, what happens, there are other technology which is considered as a mixed reality, mixed reality technology which is actually a different name of this augmented reality or augmented virtuality. So on the left hand side, there is a real environment. On the right hand side, there is a virtual environment and we are transforming ourselves from the real environment towards the virtual environment. This is one example. So how this AR and the VR technology can help the people, okay, those who are involved in the industry. Now you can see a person is looking into a hardware Okay, and this hardware maybe it's maybe related to the engine components of an automobile or a four-wheeler systems. So on the four-wheeler systems, he is observing some components on a four-wheeler systems, but he is unable to isolate or uh, unable to identify the necessary components. Now, what happens if the person is wearing a head-mounted type of display units and looks into the real objects on the real objects? Some graphics information has been inserted, has been has been placed at a proper locations. Now you can see uh, on the screen it is shown like there are four holes at this. Okay, four holes at this. So these four holes, location of these four holes, it indicates that it contains some nut bolt at that particular locations. So the person, if the person is interested to find out that how a particular component has been assembled in a in the engine part really it has been assembled in the engine part then he will find that there are four holes are there and if he wants to see where the four holes are there then he can take the help of this augmented reality and through this augmented reality some graphics information has been superimposed on the real environment and which is indicating the locations of the four nut bolt on the on the uh, real environment on the real objects so this one is known as an augmented reality. So here, this some information is augmented. Augmented means enhanced. So the so the actual information has been augmented with some graphics information, so that the total totally in totality the systems now contains more and more information. So an augmented reality system it generates a composite view for the users. Definitely, it is a composite view. So at one hand, he is seeing the real objects. On the other hand, also, he is also seeing the virtual objects also. So it is a combination of the real scene viewed by the users and the virtual screen generated by the computer that augments the screens with the additional information. So you can see that the, on real objects, on real, um, real views, more and more information has been imparted. Okay, additional information has been imparted with the help of this mixed reality or augmented reality. This is known as a distributed VR, virtual reality. Okay. So in this case, in the case of this virtual reality, there is a, uh, the, there is a, what I say that there is a graphics. Okay. And this graphics is shared, shared by each and every people in a group. So you can see that there are one people here, another person here, another person is over here. Okay. So there are, there are three people are there. And these three people are looking into one particular object, which is virtual. And each and everybody now can have a discussion about this virtual objects. Just generally, say for example, there are three doctors are there. And there are three doctors who wants to discuss, discuss about some, uh, some, comp some body parts like this. Okay. So say for example, they want to discuss about the heart. So the image of the heart or the graphics image of the heart may be placed at the middle and all are seeing the same objects, but they can have a different views because this same object is shared among the three peoples located at three different positions. Okay. And, but they are discussing about the same objects. 
so whenever a person whenever a doctor is discussing or some, telling something the other people can correlate and that is the beauty of this distributed virtual reality there are so many of different types of uh, hardware devices are there and uh, one kind of systems is known as a google cardboard so on the right hand side you can see that this is this is known as a google cardboard and you can also make it uh, in home also okay and uh, it's required some sort of uh, uh, cardboard of uh, definite dimensions and uh, lenses and uh, also you require a mobile setup okay so that will uh, but through that you can you can create your virtual uh, reality uh, headsets and at the bottom you can also see some sophisticated cardboard based on virtual reality setup and these are all commercially now available in the market so this particular figure it shows the different types of the hardware setups okay mostly the uh, head mounted type of display units and the input devices different types of input devices that is generally used uh, in the field of ar and the vr this is another device and this particular device is known as a data gloves and this can be used as an input devices as i already mentioned that um, generally uh, joysticks can be used as an input devices okay so the joysticks have a handle and you can move the handles and that will give an input uh, instructions to your computer systems and sometimes we wants to make our operations more and more uh, natural okay so the joystick operations is not a natural one so the natural what we can do the natural one so the natural instructions i can we can give it through the operations of uh, of our uh, hands okay so with the operations of our five fingers we can give uh, many instructions to a computer systems so what happens here okay the, there is a device which is known as a data gloves and these data gloves looks like a gloves normal gloves but these are all electronics gloves so uh, here a person can wear this kind of electronics gloves and these electronics gloves it has a bend sensors so you can see also on the right hand side picture there are bend sensors at there so whenever a person is wearing this data gloves he or she will uh, uh, have operations on this finger part either the fingers may be open or maybe the fingers may be closed and it can follow some particular algorithm algorithms okay so algorithms means uh, we we what we say that it will particularly it will follow some instructions and movements okay fingers movements when it follow some some specific instructions then accordingly you will get the data from this data gloves so all these bend sensors it will bend either it will bend or sometimes it may be straight and there are five fingers are there so the five there five bend sensors will give us uh, five different kind of informations in the digital form okay and these informations you can collect it and you can write your code that that say for example if it is a close if it is a completely close then you will get one kind of informations from your data gloves and when it is completely open then you will get another kind of informations electronics informations from your data gloves so if you can if you can uh correlate if you can write some sort of coding instructions that uh, that uh, if, if say for example if it is completely closed completely open or maybe these two fingers are closed rest of the things are open then this uh, uh, from this you can you can uh, write some sort of code necessary code or the necessary instructions that say for example if i do like this what does it mean if i do like this what does it mean if i do like this what does it mean right? so uh, this can be used this data gloves can also be used as an input devices and uh, this is another control devices like already i mentioned that joysticks may be one this is not a joysticks but it is like a some kind of push button type of devices so there are buttons are there so you can press it and each and every button pressing and non pressing it it is coded it has some sort of coded coded instructions is there okay so through that uh, through that this kind of devices you can also provide necessary instructions to your uh, graphic systems there are certain software the hardware uh, hardware setups are there okay like you can write your code in the c c++ programming so there are standard vrml virtual reality modeling language software are there like uh, this is uh, the, these are the different types of simulation softwares okay uh, some of the simulation softwares there 
commercially available some of the softwares they are uh, available free of cost also okay so it is like an open source software system so you can go through this particular software like unity 3d virtual reality experimentation platform beer brave what the virtual reality modeling language brml wayboards gejbo okay so the students mostly uh, they are uh, some uh, maybe uh, many of your students you are uh, engaged with the gejbo software tools those who are associated with the robotics kind of uh, activity so they know about this gejbo so these are the software through tools through which you can develop your uh, graphics systems graphics environment you can create a graphics environment and um, then this is uh, this is one applications okay like say for examples we can use this virtuality on the augmented reality systems in telephoning purposes okay so say for examples a person is uh, making a call okay and uh, then the persons on the other side okay uh, the person who is making a call he is unable to see the face of the other persons uh, through uh, uh, he is talking with so what we can do we can make some sort of augmented reality environment over here so you can see on the on on the table there are two images that there okay and these are the two images images uh, if a person is wearing the head mounted type of display units then he will be able to see the face of a person to whom he is making a call okay and whenever you will you will talk that means you are you are talking you are talking with somebody then at the time the face of the other persons will be visible to you okay and this face may be a graphics face is not a real face it may be a graphics face it will be visible on the on the on the eyes on your eyes okay and this will give you a better uh, better uh, feeling that you are as if you are talking with a uh, with the persons okay and at the same time you are able to see the person also though in a virtual environment though it is not a real environment really you are unable to see the face of the persons but the virtual form in a virtual environment uh, you are you will think that you are calling to the persons also at the same time you are able to visualize the face of the persons with whom you are talking there are uh, certain applications are there okay virtual reality augmented reality it has uh, different applications like games laser and entertainment purposes it can be used it can be used for the e-commerce retail purposes interior designs landscaping urban planning real estate tourism and travel okay and this is the most vital one um, under this pandemic situations most of the cases that uh, tourism companies they are uh, they are developing the ar and the vr systems okay and uh, they are selling it they are selling it to the customers also and the people are purchasing this kind of systems so say for example say person wants to visit some places okay but uh, during this pandemic situation he is unable to visit to that locations so in this situations the tourism companies they are developing a software setup software the hardware setups they are selling it to the customer so that sitting at home also a person can have a have a feel as if he is uh, he is visiting some other places like educations and the training purposes it can be used the healthcare is a very big market of ar and the vr technology i will come come also uh, uh, i will i will discuss in details about this healthcare part communications collaborations manufacturing part occupational safety purposes industrial people industry 4.0 those who have heard about this industry 4.0 so they know that ar and the vr is also part of this industry 4.0 so without the implementations of this ar and the vr in the industry you cannot have industry 4.0 implemented in your uh, factory these are the different setups i am not going into this uh, this part now this indicates the Uh, the applications of this AR in the VR field. Okay, so you can see that the applications areas like a healthcare, engineering, real estate, retail, military, education purposes. Okay, so the white portion is basically the it is used for the education purposes. Then uh, it can also be used for video games. Okay, live events, uh, organizing some live events. 
then video entertainment purposes also this technology is used and there is a huge market for this ear and the VR technology and you can say that the projected uh, this uh, uh, market for this ear and the VR in 2025 is of the order of 5.1 billion dollars huge market this picture is uh, I will explain this uh, this slides a little bit because it is connected with our education okay and now it is under this pandemic situations we are conducting the laboratory but uh, we conduct the laboratory in a better way through this virtual reality and the augmented reality concept so here you can see that at the bottom on the left hand side there is an experimental setup okay virtual it's not a real it's a virtual experimental setups some machine setups is there okay and you can see also there are two knobs are there there are circle two circles are there so these are the two circular knobs it is related to some bulbs so the here uh, if you want to do this experimentation in the virtual form say for example if i open the knobs okay or if i close the knob then what happens to the machines what happens to the engine part so whether the pressure will be increased the temperature will be decreased the volume will be increased the volume will be decreased whether the current level is increased or decreased, the voltage level will be increased or decreased. So everything all, everything you can see on the graphics monitor. So everything, whatever you are finding, this is on the graphics screen. This is not the real one. Okay. But you can do as if uh, you, you are doing some realistic experimentation we are doing on the virtual environments. So if I wear a head mounted type of display units, Okay, and and if I have some sort of input devices through these input devices, these input devices will be connected to the valve. So whenever I rotate these input devices, it indicates that I'm opening the valves. Okay, so immediately the system will open the open the valve, and maybe that opening of the valve it it indicates that more and more amount of fuel injection will take place in the inside the engine. So maybe that the power of the engine will be increased. Okay or maybe it will also increase the temperature level of the increase so that increase of temperature you will find it in the analog form as well as in the digital form so in the analog there are some pointer up there you can i think you can see this pointer there is a pointer okay so this pointer will move like it will change its its positions like okay so the pointer will, will maybe it will move up or the pointer may be moved down or maybe there may be some sort of uh, digital output Okay, so one, two, three, four, something, some informations in the form of a digit numerical values, it will come on the screen and you can see it through your, uh, through on your uh, head mounted type of display units. On the head mounted type of display units, you can see immediately that the, some pointer is moving up and also at the same time, there is a change, a change in the form of a digits that is indicating the temperature of the engine. So in this way, you can, uh, we can do uh, experimentations and the beauty of the system is that each and every students can work with it each and every student can do these virtual experimentations and they can do this experimentation for a number of times as they wish okay so unless and until they are satisfied with the performance of the system satisfied with their with the with the training okay so they can do the same operations again and again again and again again and again they can do it so there is no limit left but in case of a real, real systems, you will give an, an opportunity, uh, maybe for once or a twice in a classroom to do the experimentations. Definitely, there is no substitute of real, real time experimentations. There is no substitute of it. Okay. But at least if we have a virtual reality setups, okay, laboratory setups, if we can develop this virtual reality setup, at least to a many extent, it will solve our understanding problems in the uh, problems of doing some experimentations. Sometimes it may happen that there are certain devices, certain systems are there, which is very costly. Certain experimental devices, this is very costly. Okay. And the academic institute may not have this kind of setups, hardware setups. So in that case, what we can do, we can have a virtual model of that costly hardware setups. And students can do work with that one. Then I, I, I have some sort of, uh, I, I don't know that whether you have, uh, uh, I, I think most probably all of you have heard about the terms robots. Okay, robots. Now I, I, I can show you, uh, 
is it visible no is it visible okay so here you can see that uh, this is a robot these are uh, these are machines okay and this is basically a toy uh, i have a toy okay so and this toy it looks like a robot generally what happens if you go to the market to purchase a robot a standard robot the cost of a standard robot will may not be not less than like a 10 lakhs rupees and it is very difficult sometimes for an academic institute to invest money for this kind of robotic systems hardware systems it's involved cost and this kind of technology may not be available in indian market that means if something happens wrong with this robotic systems then who will uh, who will repair it you have to send this robot to the company factory and the factory may be located outside india so there is a huge investment of cost involved whenever we purchase this kind of setups now i have a, a small uh, 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 model okay is a toy is a kind of toy and you can see that with this toy i can explain the technology to some extent i can explain the all the technology of robotics technology like like say for example it can move okay so there is a joint at the base through which it can move and there is a arm like this is known as a, a first arm and this first arm it can move like this it can move the second arm like this one so this can also move like this this is known as a gripper this part is known as a gripper part okay so the gripper can have a rotations like this is the rotations of the gripper the the gripper can have a movement like this now if the robot has to move from one location to the another location say for example the robot is placed over here i wants to bring the robot to this particular position now this joint will move this joint will move then this will move then ultimately it will reach to this particular positions so through this particular model i can teach to the students the basic fundamentals of robotics technology okay but even even to have this kind of model also uh, uh, model also it's uh, it's costly also okay so so what we can do and this type of model also i we cannot give it to each and every students like okay so it will be better that if i have a substitute of this of this toy also so i can make a software software based uh, robotic system software toys okay soft toys or the soft robot models and this model this software i will give it to each and every students so the students can play with the software they can make their own model they can build up their own robots and they can play play with the movements of this kind of robots so how the robot will move how how the robot will move from one location to the another locations so they can also write the code write the programs part they can do it and even if they make mistakes then nothing nothing will happen wrong okay so here during this movement say for example if i press it with too much of uh, pressures okay the joint may break and if the joint will break they uh, if they if it is a break if it is broken then it will be of no use next time i will not be able to use it but in the software part if in if you made a mistakes the software will remain the software as it is a software so nothing will happen the system will crash and the next moment the system will becomes as it is like as a new one like okay so the, so the, so uh, uh, whenever we teach uh, uh, technology okay uh, sophisticated kind of technology so at that time our intention is that uh, if it is possible to develop virtual models okay to make make a virtual models and give the virtual model to each and every students so that the every student each and every students can play with the virtual model and unless and until the students play with the uh, with the experimental setup virtual experimental setups okay idea may not be clear to them so the applications of this ar at the vr in the e learning process is basically used for training in hazardous situations critical skill trainings on the job training then uh, compliance trainings employee on board training soft skill training sales training product training and other areas of trainings so all this kind of trainings basically industry people industry they provide training okay uh, to their employees so uh, all this kind of trainings can be provided with the help of this ar and the vr systems if i see the learning pyramid okay now you, uh, i think most of you uh, know uh, about this learning pyramid okay so at the top of the learning pyramid it is basically the listening and at the bottom part is do teach 
and if i say for example if i follow the process of listening process then the retention of knowledge the the ability to retain the knowledge that uh, we have gathered through the listening is only of the order of 5% wherever whereas if i do something okay do or teach if i do something by myself or if i teach some technology uh, then the learning will be of maximum and the retention powers of this kind of learning is of the order of 90% and if i see the locations of this bear and the ear bear and the ear is located at the bottom that means this bear and the ear is basically based upon practice by doing and teach others or immediate use okay so this particular area is covered by this ear and the bear so once we uh, take the help of this ear and the bear and if i impart some sort of training uh, or knowledge sharing with this ear in the wear it is expected that the students will retain uh, their knowledge of the order of 75% to 90% of knowledge retentions will be theirs there is again i'm showing this uh, use of this ear in the wear technology like uh, one experimental setup is there this experimental setup is virtual it is not a real okay so this is played on a computer screen and you can see that the two persons are observing the virtual experimental setups and they are doing experimentations in a virtual form so nothing real in it so very critical type of operations some process control experimentations part okay one can do it with the help of this ear vr technology in the virtual form even the technology like say for examples the nuclear technology okay um, uh, so uh, this kind of technology which is very sophisticated kind of technology which is uh, which is basically impossible to create experimental setups related to this nuclear technology and all in the, in a conventional educational institute so in that case what we can do we can make a virtual model and students can be exposed to this virtual model and they can learn it here you can see that uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a uh, virtual reality environment okay and this virtual reality environment is basically uh, uh, student certification ceremony okay a kind of convocations so say for example a person does not have any feel about the convocations so how you can uh, you can uh, you can give the knowledge or the informations about the convocation process what are the different processes involved in the convocations okay how you can impart this knowledge if you say that a person will first he will stand on the dais and then he will speak and then he will call the name of the students then the students will come so this is this descriptive process may not create the the actual impressions in the mind of the students so in most of the cases nowadays what we can do we can develop this kind of virtual uh, virtual convocations uh, ceremony okay uh, virtual reality environment and this can be shared with all the students before they come for taking uh, their certificates in the convocations so that the convocation process will be a really it will be uh, it will be an error free process like otherwise in most of the cases we find there are certain incidents are there because all these incident happens uh, because of the lack of practice by the students the students does not know that in through which direction they should move over the dais how they will bend themselves in front of the uh, experts okay distinguished people how they will come out from the dais uh, they will uh, step down from the dais so if this process they do not know so if this virtual environment is shared with each and every students before they come for the for collecting their certificates in the convocations then the convocations will be a perfect one this kind of trainings also say for example the pilot training okay training of a pilot uh, the pilot training is very costly one and you know that that the pilots are not given a flight say for example a pilot joined on the very first day in an aircraft industry and he is not given a flight okay so it requires a lot of training and this training may take space for at least maybe for one years or two years rigorous training is required and this out of this two years training period maybe one and a half years training period in a virtual form in a simulated environment not in the real environment maybe for the for the last 3 4 months or maybe for the last 6 months they will be given a real flight so that they can have a real experience otherwise in most of the cases everything is taught 
to the pilots through these virtual environments. So the driving simulators, flight simulators, ship simulators, tank simulators, there are different types of simulators platforms are there, software systems are there, commercial systems are there, through which the pilots can be given the necessary training. There are applications in the medical field and I'm just showing that uh, there are like a 20 clinical sectors are there, okay, uh, in which the virtual reality and the augmented reality uh, has already entered, like uh, disability uh, training for the disability people, okay, sports medicine, the cognitive rehabilitation purposes, then uh, exercise purposes, okay, uh, so mood disorder purposes, everything. So the training is requires a, some kind of training or so understanding is required. Speech therapy, okay. So everything for every for each and every field, uh, people are developing this uh, virtual reality environments, virtual reality softwares, so that they can give the necessary training uh, to the patients with the help of these AR and the VR systems. Like here, uh, this is a applications, medical field applications of AR and the VR systems. Say there is a patient, okay. So this patient, this is a real patient, okay. And uh, this patient has some personal problems and uh, which he does not want to share with, uh, with any caregivers, real caregivers, okay. Uh, so what, what, he, uh, what he deserves that he wants to talk with a virtual model. He wants to talk with the virtual model and he wants to explain his personal problems to a virtual model. So on the right hand side, you can, you can see there is a virtual model. This is not a real. And this is the virtual model is a kind of caregivers or maybe the nurse or maybe the doctors, even she may be the doctors. Okay. Now the patient, patient when he will speak, he will explain his problems. Then at that times there are, you can see on the, on the face, there is a square box is there. There is a square box. Okay. So this square box is a, is a virtual object. And this virtual object has been placed on the real objects. So whenever the head movement will take place, this virtual box will also move. And, and uh, you can see on the virtual box also, there are uh, like a eye locations at the eye locations. There are certain uh, virtual objects has been placed. Like in the actual leap locations, there are certain virtual objects has been placed. So whenever the person will speak, at that time the eye movement, the leaps movements, the head movements, this will be captured by this virtual object. And 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 what happens? Uh, the even the body movement of the persons. Okay. So sometimes the persons may be moved in the right hand side. Uh, or sometimes the person will move in the left hand side. So all these body movements will be captured by a camera placed at the, in the real environment. There is a camera placed in front of this patient. Okay. So the camera will capture all these informations and all these informations will be processed by a computer systems and the data will be available to the virtual caregivers. So the virtual caregivers, he will have, he or she will have some kind of medical related informations informations and from there the systems the computer system will analyze and the caregiver will provide the necessary medical support mental support or uh, uh, even uh, uh, she will provide some sort of prescriptions to the patients so here the patient as the patient is talking with a virtual object so the uh, the confidentiality is maintained the personal information is maintained okay and uh, here the, the patient is very happy that his problem has been solved. And this is the applications, the real applications of ear VR systems in case of medical field. Here we find that uh, a child is going through some medical treatment. Maybe uh, she had some sort of hand fractures. Okay. And you know that uh, this kind of fracture is very painful. But it has been observed that if the patient is seeing uh, on observing something in the virtual reality uh, environment, okay, uh, maybe that uh, the child is seeing a movie, okay, uh, then then for the time being the child will forget about 
the pain and it has been observed by the patients means uh, it has been uh, detected by the doctors that uh, there is a reduction of 44 percent of pain is reduced the feeling basically the pain is basically the feeling part so feeling will be reduced if a person is visualizing a virtual reality environment and in case of a burn burn injury or in case of a fracture generally the doctors prescribe to the patients that they should have a virtual reality set and they will see the movies etc okay so whenever they are observing this kind of virtual reality environments they are but at least for the time being they will forget about their pain part and this is uh, this is this has been scientifically true it has been established this data has been established in the factory part in the industry 4.0 okay uh, like an assembly part maintenance part export systems development trading factory planning inspections so all these kind of applications uh, generally this ear and the VR systems are used and here you can see that a person is going through some training say for example this is a motor pump assembly pump motor assembly we call this as a pump motor assembly so the mechanical students they know it very well and if you if you if you uh, require some sort of um, if you wants to impart some training that how this pump motor assembly will take space how the pumps uh, will be assembled with the motors or what are the different parts that there's in the motors which needs to be assembled and how to do the assembly and here the person is basically a training a training just very recently he joined in an industry and he 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 has to learn the pump motor assembly how he will do it now we have these air vr systems so the person will wear this head mounted display units and he will take the help of these graphics through which he can learn about the ins and out of this technology each and every details the minute details of this technology uh, technology knowledge information he can get it with the help of these air vr systems Uh, better. I will uh, um, uh, so in the summary we can say the visualizations of complicated large data is helpful for understanding and analysis purposes VR offers us a new way to interact with computers VR enables us to experience the virtual world that is impossible in the real world. And the VR also is changing our life. Eventually, VR will increase, increasingly becoming part of our life. And um, this is like augmented reality will impart, uh, impact every aspect of our life, offering unprecedented experiences and the increased productivity. Okay, definitely. Uh, this particular technology here in the VR technology okay we have to take the help of this technology and we do not have any alternatives we have to we have to take up this here in the VR concepts either in today or in tomorrow and it will be better that if I can if we can accept this technology in our curriculums in our day-to-day -day life in our work environments in the factory everywhere if we can use this here in the VR technology then we will uh, definitely will gain a lot. This is some of the work that we do in our uh, laboratory. I'm just sharing these slides only. So you can see that some of the work that we uh, do and mostly we prefer to do some hardware related activities. Okay. And we give a special emphasis in our laboratory. Okay. Robotics, mechatronics, automations, industrial automations, then biomedical fields also we work and AI systems, robotics, the hardware and the software developments, AI technology developments. And we conducted a number of research projects and in which uh, these are the works mostly done by the undergraduate students. So these are the hardware setups that has been built up by the, uh, by the students, by the undergraduate students, they did, uh, build up this kind of technology. So uh, our concept is that uh, 
in most of the cases we take up the uh, problems uh, related to the product developments we give emphasis on the product developments and whenever a problem is given to the student the student is provided some hard software setup first okay and they try to make the models understandings knowledge okay they try to build up and once their uh, knowledge build up is enough when they make some sort of model through the help of these cad software tools okay and if it is working fine if the simulation result is encouraging then we provide the fund to the students to make the hardware setups so all these hardware setups okay uh they were developed by the students so before they build up these hardware setups they have to develop they have to uh, they have to show the performance of this kind of systems to some simulation environment either the mechanical simulations environment or electronic simulation environment okay so they have to show it and once we find that this technology is okay the software part is okay the software is uh, showing encouraging results then only the students are advised to make the hardware setups so these are the different hardware setups okay so they have developed by the students and mostly these are all mechatronics robotics industrial automations electronics components development of the electronics components so we develop some sort of aero blimps okay Uh, we developed a mobile autonomous robotic systems we developed a uh, pneumatically operated robotic systems this is the mobile robot we developed we developed this uh, two hand robotic systems two hand type of systems developed this type of uh, gripping devices which can looks like a human uh, human fingers human hands and it can grasp any objects okay we developed some mobile platforms uh, is a wheelchair intelligent kind of wheelchairs okay we developed also uh, electronically controlled intelligent ankle foot processes so this is where processes okay uh, ankle foot processes so person is disable person so uh, a person disable person can wear a this kind of electronics leg okay and he can work and uh, this is the hardware setups related to the development of exoskeleton devices those who have spinal cord injury problem so they cannot work okay so they are always uh sitting on a wheelchair so we try to develop some sort of supporting systems leg supporting systems so if a person is wearing this kind of exoskeleton systems then the person can stand on the two legs and also the person can walk a certain distance also so in a in a confined space the person can have a uh, mobility so uh if you permit me then i will uh, i can show some videos and these videos will give you a uh, good exposure to you uh, what this ear and the vr systems because the ear and the vr is not a theoretical subjects it's a practice based subjects okay you have to you have to make a model you have to you have to work with the software systems and we have to work with the hardware systems then only you will be able to come across this particular technology so we can talk uh, more and more theoretical theoretically we can talk but unless and until the students get some sort of exposures practical exposures okay unless and until they do by their own hands it is really difficult to make this virtual reality uh, softwares okay so that's why we always prefer that the students should must have uh, practice based uh, exercise okay so they will be given some sort of problems and they have they have to solve it and unless and until they solve it okay um, if i just show it the videos then uh, they will think that it is possible to be, make but how to make okay how to build up this kind of systems unless and until they themselves build up the systems the knowledge remains uh, partial so give me some time i just is it possible to play some video uh, sir video clip uh, actually uh, how many minutes sir uh maybe for 5 10 minutes 10 minutes oh uh, okay sir okay please i'm just actually we are expecting uh, from you one training session sir one full day training session uh, 
based on that particular tool. Okay, so I I, I just play one or two videos only. Okay, okay, okay. I just play one or two videos only. at least. Uh, some sort of information the students will get it from here. Okay, okay, please. This is not coming. Not yet, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Just uh, now it is uh, visible. I'm sharing it. Okay. No plates. Uh. Oh. Yeah, it's coming. So you can see that uh, th th this is an example of augmented reality. Okay. You can see that this is an environment, industrial environment. The background is industrial environment. Everything is real. But on the real, you can see this particular robotic systems or a machines. It is virtual. This is virtual. And the virtual object is placed in a real environment. So whenever a person is seeing uh, through these uh, head mounted display units, okay, he will see at the same time, he will be able to see the real objects. That means the real environment, as well as he will be able to see this virtual objects. So on a real environment, you will find that the robot, the virtual robots, they are playing. So sometimes the, uh, the engineers, okay, uh, they, uh, they have some sort of confusion that where they will place the robots. Where is the actual location so in the industry where they will place a robot? Generally, they order the robot and then they, they try to find out that where they can place the robot which will not uh, make any, uh, which, which will allow it to move without any uh, hitting any obstacles. Okay. So in that situations, what the engineers can do, they can place in a real environment, they can place a virtual robot and they can play with the virtual robots before you, before they uh, place the order. And if they find that the virtual robot is able to work in a real environment, okay then they can place that particular robot. So it helps an industry, industry people to take a decision that which particular model of the robot they will select, where the robot will be placed, what should be the capability of the robot, everything they can, they can do it in a simulated environment before they actually purchase the robots. So this is the beauty of this uh, uh, augmented reality part. I will just, I will show another one. Uh, this is the last one I'm playing. Yeah. This is visible. Yes, sir. I do not know that whether the sound is uh, but not getting the sound, I think most probably.
Uh, is it in uh, real time, sir? Uh, actually, yeah. No, I, yeah. I'm playing a video. Okay. Uh, no, I'm actually, playing... what I'm asking, uh, uh, are you being in this particular domain in your lab, sir? What no, no. This, this is not in the lab. This is not in the lab. Okay. So, in that case, you can share that uh, video link. audio is not available now uh, audio I, I i don't know that why the audio is not working audio is not working anyway this uh, you can see that uh, here also the same thing the person is wearing the head mounted display units and uh, he is located in a factory in a shop floor and he is observing some machines and whenever he is observing some machines the machines are connected with some uh, data informations augmented informations so whenever the person is looking at into a particular system or a device okay immediately the informations associated with that device is visible in the form of a graphics so say for example he is looking at the boiler side okay the boiler immediately the temperature of the boiler will be visible he can he can immediately he can see the temperature at the boiler side so the pressure say if the boiler if it is a boiler then the pressure is also very important then if he is looking into a boilers okay then immediately the pressure temperatures temperature part of the boiler whether the boiler is working or not, whether the boiler is connected with some other devices, all the informations will be available to the persons in a virtual form. This is not in the real form, this is in the virtual form. Okay, so this is like a stored data. But if there are sensors at there which are connected with the computers in an online form, in a real form, in a real time, then the sensors data which is collected from the, from the uh, boiler side, Whatever the temp whatever the uh, sensors, the temperature sensors will collect the data from the boiler side. So that will be directly it will be visible to the concerned persons if he or she is wearing this head mounted type of display units. So in case of means uh, uh, in case of a virtual uh, reality systems, the data which is available to the machine side may be a stored data in the offline mode or it may be a real data in the online mode. So it depends upon what kind of systems we are using there. Whether there is any real sensor systems are there, sensors has been ap applied in, a, in the real environments, which can gather the necessary information from the machine side. And these informations may be passed on to the, uh, to the controller units. And from the controller units, the data, uh, data will be available in the, in the machine side. In the form of virtual reality data, uh, like uh, one setups we have, like I will just uh, end up with one uh, work, a small work that uh, we developed in our laboratory. If it is possible, let me check it. Yeah, I will I will just open this one. I will share it. This is visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. Yeah. It's very, very small examples. Okay. That the graphics, how the graphics is attached with the real objects. So there is a graphics uh, object. This object is a graphics hand, a colorful hand. It's basically a graphics object. 
now this graphics object has been superimposed on a real object on a real hand real fingers now if the real finger moves the graphics will also move so first one is the matching process okay so uh, the graphics object must be exactly must be fitted with the real objects and then you can see over here that whenever the real object is moved the graphics object is also moved is basically the tracking operations whenever the hand is moved at the same time the graphics hand is also moving the real hand is moving at the same time the graphics hand is moving so in this way one can create some uh, some uh, demonstration videos okay so graphics some graphics video which is basically it is very uh, very difficult to build up with some logic so they can be built up with the uh, with the direct interventions of the human being so here the movement of the hand if you wants to create some uh, graphics movements of the hand okay it's very difficult to uh, to develop it writing the code but what you can do you can take the help of this virtual reality concept or the augmented reality concept and uh, here you can teach the motion of your virtual object the virtual hand with the help of your real hands so in this way uh, people can develop some sort of movies also different types of movies it can be it is very easy to develop it with the uh, with the direct instru instructions or direct interfacing with the with the human beings so this is a new technology okay and uh, we also don't know that uh, the, the 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 depth of this technology also so far okay and uh, but the thing is that we find it has a potential and industry it is not an, uh, limited to academics this ar vr concept it has been uh, accepted by the industry peoples and whenever the people industry people they have accepted a technology you know, we should we should know that it has a potential it will grow further and the industry they requires expert manpowers in the field of vr in the vr who will develop this all these examples i have shown these examples okay somebody has to develop these examples if you wants some application has to be built up then we require the manpowers expert manpowers who has the good knowledge of the hardware part and the software part the graphics part okay and uh, the different types of input output devices then only you will be able to make a realistic uh, ar vr systems okay so if there is any specific questions you can ask me सिमुलेशन uh um, the i i think i have already uh, shown the different commercial softwares available okay and uh, let me open that portion Actually, in your slide, only C, C plus plus. Is it sufficient, or uh, is there no. any specific? Language? No. If I, if we wants to, uh, just a minute. I I just open this. I think. Yeah. C C plus plus means uh, the technology has uh, uh, has developed. Okay, and it is a grown up technology. So if we start with only C C plus plus, then uh, 
uh, we'll be able to only cover the basic part of it. So there are like a Unity software is there, okay, uh, 3D Unity toolbox. So we can directly start with this Unity 3D toolbox rather than starting with C, C++, okay, because the Unity uh, 3D toolbox is also developed uh, at the background, it has been developed with C, C++. So rather than uh, writing the code, starting the code from the very basic, it will be better that if you can start with some standard software tools like this uh, Unity 3D software is available along with that, uh, like uh, other softwares are available. I'm just going through these particular softwares, slides part. Like uh, Unity 3D is there, then VREP software is also there, VRML is there, Wayboards is there, Gagebo is there. So with this, uh, 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 this kind of software tools, we can develop the virtual simulations model. VR models, we can develop this. This is very standard software tools. Or otherwise, um, what we can do also, let me check with the other softwares which is available commercially, like uh, augmented reality SDK is there, Vuforia softwares, okay. And generally the Vuforia software is used along with this, um, uh, your Unity 3D software tools. Okay, Vuforia softwares, Unity 3D, uh, then uh, Google AR code softwares. These are standard uh, tools, okay, mm, which can be used for this um, and then blenders also okay these are the softwares thank you sir and the next question is what are the software tools we should learn how how do you develop hardware setup for ar and vr ar vr systems means uh, already i have shown that one google cardboard um, uh, that head mounted display unit is there. Okay. So uh, that uh, we can develop it very easily because um, the technology is available and it is available in the website also. Means you can also learn how this kind of uh, low cost systems can be built up. But uh, the actual cost uh, of these AR and the VR systems, it is the, uh, the, the display unit head mounted display units it's big, it's it was uh, means even uh, 5 5 years back or 10 years back the cost of the system was quite uh, in the higher side and this may be one of the reason that why this particular technology of ear and the wear okay it was not accepted by the common people because uh, you cannot uh, you cannot develop this ear and the wear system unless and until you have these head mounted display units and this is a very hardware setup so it's in box cost and also at the same time we require some sort of input output devices like i have mentioned like joysticks is one kind of input devices or some push button type of systems is required or sometimes that uh, i i have shown you that uh, data gloves okay so these are the input devices you requires okay so to develop a minimum uh, minimum level of ar vr systems at least you require one head mounted display unit and uh, one or two uh, input, input input output uh, device in, input devices because the output you have because you have a mobile camera you are using this mobile camera as a head mounted display unit if you are using it then it is fine because in the mobile also you have a headphones okay so you can create the necessary uh, environment so the environment means visual uh, it has a visual effect as well as it has a sound effect okay so you have to create some sort of uh, environment uh, with the help of the sound also sound is also plays a very important role in creating an environment so if it has if it is an industrial environment how you will feel that you are in an industry so the industrial in, uh, in the industry industry there are some sort of noise in the industries okay and unless and until you get this noise you will not feel that you are in an industry Okay, so so that's why of creating this kind of uh, visual audio visual effect. Okay, we require a hardware setups minimum a few uh, minimum level of hardware setups. So unless and until we have this head mounted display units, 
and your mobile phone okay and uh, your uh, input devices like joysticks and your sound systems okay so you will not be able to create this ar vr systems minimum level this is required okay, cost, in, uh, cost and uh, definitely uh, definitely you may require a computer systems also with the good, good graphics real time graphics that is also required so the okay. improvement of development of this laboratory may be like uh, uh, a few lakhs of rupees three four lakhs of rupees is required for development of ar vr lab at least at the minimum level okay yes sir thank you sir and uh, for ec students uh, what is required to imitate a project in this domain and how they can start to work in this domain like i have shown one example like uh, one machine okay so the machine is moving from one location to the another locations that was the robot means its commercial name is robot so it was moving like one place to another so the students can get a uh, get a small project work like how to create a, a 2d objects may not be a 3d objects it a 2d objects and this 2d object will be superimposed on a on a uh, on a real uh, environment on a real image okay so there will be a there will be a video real video will be there and on this real video how a uh, cad graphics graphics based object can be placed okay. so if this kind of small problems is given to the students then it will be helpful or maybe say for example we can take up another another problems like uh, you can create a, a virtual uh, flight okay you can create a virtual flight graphics graphics based virtual flights and uh, you may have some sort of uh, sensor systems which may be uh, uh, like a uh, what i say that uh, uh, it, it it is known as a accelerometers you can have an accelerometers a small low cost accelerometers maybe few hundred rupees cost is the cost of the accelerometers so you can have a three axis accelerometers x axis y axis and z axis accelerometers and you can develop a small uh, microprocessor based systems where the reading of the accelerator accelerometers can be captured by your microprocessor units or the microcontroller units and uh, then it can be converted into some instructions necessary instruction say for example if i once uh, if if i move my my uh, hand okay or if i rotate my hand in this direction if i rotate it so it indicates the rolling motions of the flight so immediately immediately on the virtual screen or a computer screen whatever the model has been developed by me that will be uh, that will have a simulated motions like a roll motions then if i if i move my my head like uh, my uh, if i move my hand like this then the another accelerator accelerometers will be effective and that may be uh, maybe this will be connected with the pitch motions pitch motions of the virtual objects so the roll pitch and the yaw motion of a aircraft okay so you can demonstrate it you can control it you can demonstrate it with the help of simple accelerometers and these accelerometers will be placed on your uh, on your hand okay and uh, you have to make a uh, uh, electronics uh, pcb board you have to make a pcb board and the reading will be connected to a to a computers through the data acquisition systems and uh, once you operate your hands this movement will be captured by the accelerometers okay and uh, this will be converted into some instructions the angular motion instructions of the virtual object and the virtual object which will move like so you will have to make some sort of interface that how your hardware reading will be accessed by your graphic systems so there must be some sort of uh, 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 means uh, your graphic systems must be must have a features that it can accept the data which is coming in the real time from some accelerometers so this kind of small project that the students can build up thank you so much sir for clarifying the doubts 
and now i invite ms archana arjoti to deliver out of thanks now it's time to express our gratitude on behalf of electronics and communication engineering st joseph institute of technology st joseph institute of institutions i would like to thank dr subhashish pramuk for the wonderful speech thank you sir for taking out time from your busy schedule and joining us to share your knowledge my heartfelt thanks to our beloved chairman dr b babu manoharan sir for organizing an wonderful webinar to gain knowledge my sincere thanks to our managing director mrs s jasipriya ma'am and our director mr b sashashekar sir for their guidance in conduction of the webinar and i would like to express my gratitude to our principal dr p ravichandran sir for his support to conduct this webinar and our department heads dr c nyanakausalya ma'am and dr g rohini ma'am for their words of encouragement and guidance and our department staff and organizing team for arranging this webinar successfully and finally my sincere thanks to all the participants for your active participation and support thank you all and dear participants thank you for your feedback from once again thank you so thank you for your question thank you thank you thanks to all of you thank you so much sir thank you thank you very nice session i think all these students enjoyed your session uh, we are expecting a uh, one more training session sir uh, is a practice based otherwise uh, theory yeah. means uh, more or less uh, theory part yeah. is known to the students like okay yeah it is a new technology it is uh, a new technology uh, unless and until we do some practice working uh, small small problems uh, means yeah. uh, solution of small problem even it takes a lot of time I think it's a realistic thing. Uh, you can develop some graphics. Sometimes we develop the graphics, but when you see the graphics, it does not 